Oh! Oh, that's right! I get to completely... I get to completely make them up! Oh, I forgot about this! Oh, this is exciting. This is exciting. Let's get a woman in the party. Let's get a woman in the party. Yeah. And she needs to be a fighter. So... Yeah, so the Adric Empire, Valian, and Direwood women occupy, occupy the domestic educational organizational roles. They are primary hunt they are the primary hunters, soldiers and leaders of the tribes of the Nasik. And the Ixmatil and Erin Glath women have more fluid social roles. So I don't want Adir, Valian, or Dryer Woods, because she's going to be a fighter. Um she could be human. I was thinking owl man. Though she could be dwarfy. Because I have an elf and I'm an Orlan. She could be godlike and I could give her that freaky face but if she's gonna be a fighter it's probably good to be able to wear a helmet <laughs> I mean doesn't it you didn't have to ah uh, I think I'm gonna go for an Orlan Coastal Aumana are very rare in the drier wood, but those that do make the journey usually do so as mercenaries, bodyguards, or soldiers. Coastal Aumana gain bonuses to defend against prone and stun effects. Yep, that's what she's going to be because she's going to be a mercenary. Now, she could be a fighter, or I could try out... The Barbarian. When Barbarians hit with melee attacks, they automatically make reduced damage attacks at all other enemies within a short distance of the target. Oh my goodness. That's ridiculous. Thing is, I want them to be a tank, so I think fighter is going to have to be the way. Man, a lot of these things are kind of magey. It's very interesting. Fighter abilities, a knockdown or discipline barrage. I think she's going to have to do dis discipline barrage. Shortly raising her accuracy for a certain amount of time. Yep, that's going to have to be the one. Attributes. Might's important. Constitution is hugely important. And resolve. What was, okay, so revolves. Oh, I was just mentioning that. I didn't remember what that was. Internal, internal drive, determination, fearlessness, emotional intensity. They can project to others. Used for mental intimidation, leadership, and convincing performances. Maintains, helps maintain concentration 
and contributes to the will and deflection defenses. Okay, so I don't like inaccurate fighters, nor do I particularly care for slow ones. Oops, she was already racially high. Oh, wow, I'm taking points away, aren't I? Crap, what, ah, uh, poop. What was she at? She said 13 to start. Ah, oh, no, it remembered it. Ah! All right, well. Smite is damage and healing. Resolve is concentration, deflection, will. All right, I'm going to put that extra point in resolve because she needs to be more defendery. And where is she from? I said... Holy crap, is that two pole arms she's wielding? I think I like the living lands, potentially. And the Ixmanteel culture is one of the oldest. And I remember it's also got a, a good split for the people. I'm going to go with Ixmanteel. Background. She's a mark. I mean, she's clearly a mark. She could be a philosopher, Merc, <laughs> but no. All right, well, that's her. I, I mean, I pretty much like how she looks. I can change the heads, though. I've got several hairs to chair change. Might be eleven. I was a City of Heroes player. I did spend plenty of time in the uh, character creation stuff, but not tons of time like some people did. But I did have purposeful sets. You know, I kind of like seven with the gold parts in it. I like that. Next. Voice. Hey there. I'll lead the way. Show them how it's done. Time to see and not be seen. Eh? I've got this. Yeah, usually the feisty is the thief, but <clears throat> as long as she doesn't say thiefy things, that's great. Enter name. Well, Fexel just followed a bit ago. And she's feisty, and she's female, and she's a fighter. She's a female fighter, feisty female Fexel. Boom. I have a larger party! I have a larger party! I'm so excited! And these folks can level! Alright! Alright, you have six points. Points to advance. 
Let's advance survival once. We'll just keep that going a little bit. We're going to advance lore. And then that's it. We're going to carry the next points into the next level. Ooh. So he's got two spells now. Combusting wounds. Causes enemy wounds in the area of the effect to ignite, inflicting burn damage over time. Oh, that's rough. Corrosive Siphon. Converting that essence into endurance for the caster. Oh, goodness. I love it. Curse of the Blighted Blackened Sight. It's a blinding effect. Ooh, Fetid Carcass. Target becomes paralyzed, afflicted with boiling pustules that erupt, sickening those nearby. Yep, that sounds great. Infused with Vital Essence. Infuses the caster with vitality, giving them a temporary increase. Okay. Necrotic Lance. Crow damage over time. Ray of Fire. Rolling Flame. Miasma of Dull Mindedness. Binding Web is going to be kind of a stuck inside. Yeah, we're going to go with that. done and myself gonna pick up another survival I'm kind of really going all over the place with this guy skill wise I should probably pick up something a little bit more specific at some point Yeah, I totally forgot that. Like, there's definitely, I think there are definitely some real specific people for you to pick up, like Aloth. But unlike, but unlike Baldur's Gate, not everyone is, and they're not just sprinkling the world all over with them. They're, I think they're going to be a little bit more sparsely uh, put out there and give you the opportunity to make specific people for exactly what your party needs. Because that was another problem with, with Baldur's Gate, with involving the D&D &D, uh, level, or not level, but uh, alignment system with the available NPCs that they've made. Like, if you didn't like someone, like, maybe you just didn't like them as a person, even, or you wanted to have a really thief-heavy party or something like that. You didn't have that option because you you only had so many people within your um, alignment boundaries that you could put in your party. Um, so that was one of the things they thought about doing for this was doing that character creation for your extra guys. So that is super awesome. So I want him to be both... Stealthy and athletic. He doesn't have to pick up much more lores. He doesn't really need to pick up mechanics. Because I'm using the stealth to get surprises in combat. Not, not be a thief, if you will. And here's a level 2 power. But I can also go back and get level 1 powers. Sales of target grasping reality. Frightening and confusing them. Nope. But I'm going to get Whispers of Treason. Amplified Thrust. Bounces psychic energy harmlessly off the target and onto the closest nearby enemy, causing pierce damage and pushing them back. Uh, oh, so you target and you target an allied and an ally, and then someone else is thrown back. So if someone's on the mage, I could push them back. Okay. Phantom foes. They think they're surrounded by other people, making them flanked. Psycho Vampiric Shield. Cypher uses the target's strength of mind against it, stealing a potion of its resolve in order to better deflect incoming attacks. So it drains resolve to get plus 25 deflection. That's interesting. Recall Agony. Causes the target to relieve, relive the psychic trauma of an injury moments after receiving it, experiencing the damage all over again. Foe target 30% of all damage reapplied over 15 per seconds. Eh. I'm going to keep amplified thrust just for the um, 
the party manipulate or the the party safety kind of stuff it can do. All right. Uh, so now we need to. Well, first off, if I say go here, yeah, the fighters in the back. So I need to. I've got this. There we go. Got it. No, 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 no. Everybody. Everybody, go this way. See, yep. Now she and I are up front. Great. That's what we're talking about. Greetings. Now let's get a room. I just spent a lot of money, but... Recall Agony could be really fun with one high damage use or spell... Think a double finale in Darkest Dungeon. Yeah. Yeah, maybe that's a... Yeah, I wasn't thinking about triggering it right after someone else's huge damage. That's a good idea. Especially if someone manages to get a critical, and I see the critical happen, and then it's like, oh, quick, pause! Get him to do that. Yeah, that would be a really good idea. Uh, let's get the... No, let's just... Yeah, perception mechanics. We're going to do the cheap room. I'm not... I'm not super rich yet. We're just going to do the cheap room. I haven't even had dinner yet. It's 7 p.m. over here. Your sleep is restless and fevered, assaulted by hisses and whispers, blanketed with a suffocating anxiety. You open your eyes to awaken and find yourself in front of Gilded Vale's gallows trees, the creaking of its ropes growing louder in your mind until the sound is deafening. Hanging from the tree is an old dwarf woman whose face has shriveled inward like molding fruit. Her head hangs limply to one side. As you look at her, she looms larger and larger in your mind until she is mere inches from your face. Suddenly, her head snaps up and her eyes open up, and they are empty, and behind them is a vast nothingness that makes your stomach drop. Her mouth slowly parts, and with a gust of rancid air, she speaks a word. Watcher. You jolt awake, the foul smell of the dwarf woman's breath still permeating your nostrils. Sweat runs down your face in thick droplets, and your skin is soaked from head to toe. You remember the woman. You remember seeing her decaying face when you spoke with the magistrate. He called her an animancer. Though it fills you with a new, queasy apprehension, you feel a strange compulsion to see this woman once more, if only to confirm that she is truly dead. 645 EXP! So this is what needed to happen after seeking help for my condition. So all this time, I've been trying to figure out what to do with that, and it was just sleep in the end. Uh, effects that modify the same statistic will often suppress each other. So no, like, double tripling up on certain stat bonuses. Oh, I need to check that gal's inventory. Fexel's inventory. She's got leather armor. She does have a shield. She has a large shield and a mace. What's in my loot? My loot. What does she have? She has a mace. All right, then let's bring her out. Let's bring her out as a Marian shield, as a Marin shield, and I don't know if I'll be able to use the same thing. Nope. I'm going to have to have two shields. She can't just swap a weapon. Here she is. 
Yeah. Where do I where do I interact with her? Caladra de Brazerni. That was her name. Oh, click under underneath her. The squat, distended body of, the, of an elderly dwarf woman dangles from the thin, crooked bow that sags at the tug of her noose. The bloated purple flesh of her neck, worn away in patches like moth-eaten linen, bulges over the rope that suspends her, and her lifeless head lulls forward rigidly from one side to the other when the breeze shifts. You perceive a faint glow around her that casts no light on its surroundings, but there's a tepid warmth to it, and you feel somehow that you could reach out and touch it. Not with your hands, but with some aspect of yourself that has no worldly dimension. Reach out for the woman. Yep, that's what I thought. You take a deep breath, clearing your mind, focusing on your objective. As you exhale, you feel yourself spreading out towards the hanging woman, perceiving all that lies between you and her with new, unfamiliar awareness. Once you have expanded it enough to reach her, there is a sudden jolt to your mind, a ringing, uh, electric surges of images and words and sounds. Involuntarily, you shut your eyes and feel yourself being pulled down to some deeper consciousness in a space occupied only by you and the hanging woman. And when you open them again, she is staring at, with you, at you with eyes clouded in a milky fog, her body still swaying in a wind you no longer feel from a tree that stands planted in a misty void. The woman gives a slow nod of her head, the rope creaking as she does so, and she smiles at you. Have you come here for me, dear? Or have you gotten lost? Ah, it is both, I think. Yes? I need to understand something that's happened to me. She nods, a look of pity on her face as though consoling a child. The world looks a little different than it used to, is that it? Feels like you're noticing things for the first time that have always been there. You have seen past the shroud. It only takes an instant. Your soul remembers, yes? Remembers how it sees when it leaves the body, like being reminded of a dream you had forgotten. You are a watcher now, and a watcher you will stay. What's a watcher? What indeed? Long hours have many animancers spent studying such things. Not I, no. Not I. I'll tell you what I know, though, since fair is fair. And here we are visiting you and I, and it reminds me of better times. Souls pass on. Some say through Audra stones, which are the blood veins of the world. They leave the world for a time and are reborn into it, sometimes more than they were before, but usually less and seldom the same. For all souls there is a time where they do not live, yet have not passed on, and those souls roam the world, same as you or I, either leaving or lost but no one sees them because they have forgotten how. A watcher sees, though, knows what to look for. And sometimes they know a person just by looking at them, know where they've been in ages past when their bodies were other bodies, see memories even their owner can't recall. A wonder to behold when all goes well, a wonder. <laughs> what do you mean? when all goes well. Oh, nothing to be afraid of, I'm sure. It's just much to take in for some. Sometimes there's trouble sleeping or other difficulties. You should see old Meerwald. He could tell you much more than I. A watcher just like you helped many in his day took up in an old keep no one would claim. Not far, not far. Kadnua, beyond the Black Meadow. He will welcome the company. The Black Meadow is the direction I need to go for that uh, caravan, so that's not bad. Uh, 
How are you able to speak to me? Is that what we're doing? Perhaps it just seems that way. Perhaps it is the easiest way for your mind to make sense of it. I think it is a very good choice. Okay. I think I survived a bivouac. Do you know what why that would be? Did you now, dear? My, that would be something, wouldn't it? Could be luck, could certainly be. A storm can be a careless thing. Or maybe it got its hands around your soul but couldn't pick it up. A soul can be heavy if it stayed in one piece through its time. Strong souls, we call them in the trade. Cold, I mean. Call them. Those days are all behind me, no? You said souls break apart over time? Oh, yes. Entropy. Rima Gan's work. We know little of why or how. We lose pieces of ourselves when we die and pick up pieces of others when we are born again. But less than what we lost. We try to stop it with the animantic sciences, but with little success. No, no. A very small few resist Rimargan's influence and stay together through some force of defiance, at least for a time. But they all succumb eventually, I think. They could have recorded her clicking her tongue there. I want to know something about you. Me? <laughs> I'll bore you to tears, though. <laughs> What's an animancer? A student of the soul. Something so basic, yet so poorly understood. But so, so many breakthroughs have been made in my lifetime. Had been made. Had been. To hear the locals tell it, we're a gang of soul manglers that preys upon the weak-minded. And the worst of us are. But the best of us? The best? Inspirations. Miracle workers. My parents were soul twins. Miserable before they met. Empty inside. It was an animancer who helped one find the other. Turn their lives around. You wouldn't believe the stories. Amnesiacs helped to remember their lives. The suicidal brought back from the brink of oblivion. The elderly afforded extra moments to say their goodbyes. How soon we forget when we're afraid. Hmm. Man, I wanted to pick the Animancer class. I don't think that was an option, right? It's a fascinating science. A fascinating time to be alive in a place like Deerwood that does not control the research, no? I love the Valian Republics for many things, but their recent caution will leave them behind, I fear. What happened to you? She laughs, a rasping, chokled cackle escaping between rows of butterly yellow teeth, causing her body to bob up and down with each spasm. Seeing your blank expression, she catches herself. <laughs> oh, come now. Such a question. As though the answer were plain as a rope tied for strangling. Allow an old dwarf her last bit of cheer. <laughs> well, I came where I was needed, didn't I? Offered my services to Lord Radrick for a pittance. A humble pittance. I was to examine the Lord's wife, see why the gods have seen fit to poison her womb. Studied her for months, looked high and low for impurities, tested her balance, the permeability of her essence. Do you know what I found? Tell me. Nothing at all. A healthy woman, head to toe, blessed with a beautiful soul. Such a sweet woman, too. Meek, but warm-hearted. A few months' time, and the lord of the house demanded answers. For a time, I told him what he wanted to hear. Oh, yes, my lord. She is riddled with imbalances. I must have time to cure her. As the birth drew near, he grew impatient, as lords do. And this is where I've ended up. Ah. <sighs> 
I'm gonna say farewell now. Goodbye, my dear. It was lovely visiting. She closes her eyes and her head slumps forward over the noose, and your surroundings seem to bleed into your vision from some unknown place of waiting. Show Knight was granted Crucible of the Soul. Are you all right? You seem to have... You just lost just now. Yes, I'm fine. It's good to know, but I don't suppose you could tell me what that was all about. I'm a watcher. Well, that is interesting. And I expect this has something to do with the hooded figure in the runes. Hmm? Hooded figures in the runes. I don't know. In any case, I appreciate your honesty. Since we're traveling together, it's probably wise for us to share these things. Do you know anything about the watchers? Only that they're rare and that they seem to have unique insights into certain soul conditions. He coughs. As you just demonstrated. All right, let's let's move. Travel to Cad Noir. All right. All right, party, head out. Seventeen and a half. What? Oh, look! I can talk to people now. Woohoo! Once earthy and sweet, winds your way into its nostrils. Your eyes trace the smoke to its origin, where you find a broad man with straw-colored hair leaning against a mossy rock wall, his pipe held to his lips with one meaty hand. He looks you directly in the eye, but the look is not aggressive. He rewards you with a peculiar smile. Seventeen and a half. Well, could be eighteen, depending on how you count the dwarf woman. There's a dwarf woman. Oh, oh, the people on the... Uh, he's talking about the number of people hanging. The dwarf woman. You were trying to figure out whether to count her as a full person. I think you ought to. The people hanging from the tree. Eighteen of them. Well, last I counted, anyway. <laughs> Is that what you people do for fun around Names here? Names are there. Though to the people around here, might as well be nineteen. Ooh! Don't think I'd put you much higher than twenty-two. Twenty-three tops. You look like the sort that likes to get involved. <laughs> what makes you think I was interested in the dwarf woman? Looks at you a moment. I was smoking over here, saw you staring at her. Twice I refilled my pipe. You never so much as blinked. Your mouth was so slack I took you for a radrick at first. <laughs> Impossible, I don't drool half as much. <laughs> I'll just say I've been out of sorts lately. See, now he doesn't have dialogue. Why does it cut in and out? Ayla, or Adra, for what? Oh, I ever forgot the mage's name. He had dialogue, spoken dialogue at first. Darn it. Of course, we all got our bad days when we would stand perfectly still and stare at corpses for a while without blinking. All right, then I'll ask him. Do you know what a watcher is? Careful, friend. Let's not use that word around here. There'd be any number of Radric bootlickers within earshot. Ciphers, animancers, watchers. Same thing in the eyes of folks around here, Radrick especially. They come to these parts all the time with their cures, preying on the desperate. None of them are who they claim to be. Of course, seeing you with that funny look, I'd be halfway inclined to believe you were having some kind of communion with that dwarf. <laughs> Either case, maybe I'm not 19 after all. N no offense. <laughs> Jacob the Liar! How you doing? Haven't seen you around in forever. Playing uh, Pillars of Eternity here. Still fairly early on in the game. I don't know how much longer I'm going to stream. I'm just really, really enjoying it. That adult life. No kidding. I should be working on my resumes. Get out a few more resumes and cover letters to the other railroads. All right. You think you're going to be hanged. What's that supposed to mean? None taken. I'm going to say none taken because I understand what he's saying. Good. They don't mean it personal when they hang folks here. I have to remind myself. The town's had it in for me for a long time now. Only fellow who ever stuck up for me, well, 
He's number 18 up there. My headman on the farm. Used to be my captain during the war. Why was your headman hanged? Got involved. Radrick sent men down here the other day. Said they had it on good authority someone in town was working with Kalsk. Plotting Radrick's overthrow. Said if he didn't come forward right then and there, they'd hang every last one of us. No one was coming forward. So Swithin, that's my head man. He steps up and says it's him. They took him at his word. Bound to happen sooner or later. If not for plotting against Radrick, then for protecting me. What does the town have against Take you? The wrong God. That's what it comes down to. Used to be a lot of Vathus worshippers in Gilded Vale. That mess of rocks over there, that was a temple to him, to give you some idea. Then one day, somebody named Widewind shows up on Deerwood's doorstep. Says he's the living flesh of Aethys. Got an army with him. Suddenly, Aethys isn't so popular in these parts. My brother Woden and me, neither of us believed it. No way was that Aethys. He enlisted, then I did too. But, uh... He didn't make it back. The first thing I noticed was the voice actor of that character being McCree from Overwatch. Which one? Who's Who's got the same voice? After the war, people took to punishing Aethys worshippers, accusing them of treason. Got real ugly, especially after the legacy started. Folks needed someone to blame. I was safe because I fought, but then this rumor starts that my brother... That he was on the wrong side. And I wasn't so safe anymore. Until my headman stepped in and said they'd have to hang him to get to me. Seems that's no longer a concern. Of course, the townies don't do the hanging these days, but when Raedric's men come, they got no problem doing the pointing. <laughs> you can see why I was eager to leave. All right. I'm going to skip over to, if you're next to be hanged, what are you still doing here? Drinking, mostly. Point of fact, I'm on way, my way out. Just haven't figured out where I'm going yet. Not a whole lot of places out there that don't think Wademan's legacy started with Wademan. We could travel together. Where are you headed? Some place called Quagna. There's an old watcher there who might be able to help me. I even remember hearing something about that years ago. He tamed that place. People would seek him out for all kinds of things. Troubles of the soul, questions for the departed. Of course, that was back when you didn't have to say Watcher with a hush on your breath. Shh, Watcher. A Buffy Watcher, a Marvel Watcher. All kind of Watchers. All right. A man such as that, there'd be things I'd want to ask him. I don't know why I never thought of it before. Not sure how I feel about setting out with a stranger, and a strange one at that. But truth be told, you might be the only one in town who wouldn't feel some relief seeing me swing from that tree. I think, Sa Holy Samsonite and Jacob, that we can finally actually build up a party. I might not have had to spend that money on that developing that character. There's a fine reason if I ever heard one. All right then, guess I'll do some sightseeing. As long as you're not the one picking the sights. Let's get going. Yes. Level. And he is a level 2 fighter. No surprise here. So I've got a second fighter in the party already. Alright. You're going to get one point in stealth. So you're not completely sucky at it. Yeah. He seems a little wise, so I'm going to give him lore and, of course, survival. And another athletics. Okay. No problem, Jacob. Bonus knockdown. Grants the fighter an additional use of the knockdown power per encounter. Or rapid recovery. Boosts his hardiness, increasing the rate of his or her constant recovery. Okay, let's take the recovery. Oh, 
I had to... Oh, that was from level 1 to level... And now I'm coming up to level 3 or 4 or something. Okay, let's do this again. So let's do another survival. Another athletics. And we'll save the rest. Fighter abilities. Defender. The fighter increases his number of engagement targets to three, but at the expense of his deflection. Interesting. Guardian stance, which all his energy to defending allies, lowers accuracy, but increases the deflection of, yeah, he's a total tank. And confident aim. 20% of grazes converted to hits, and 20%... Uh, no, we're going to take the... Guardian stance, I think. Or is it going to be the defender? It's going to be the guardian stance, I think. 